Wade Namura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. I'm going to take you on a trip this time, uh, this show and program, to show you what we've done in Guatemala. This project specific had to do with a Rotary Foundation project where I served as a cadre. A cadre is a technical expert. Uh, this part was for water and sanitation. And the reason I want to show you this one, um, I've shown you other shows before on different projects that we've done, but this one's fairly unique because this evaluation actually had to do with a project that was not yet implemented. In other words, this is uh, the pre, uh, pre look at what a project is actually going to take a look at. And I wanted to share this with you because there's a lot of process that goes in front of actually developing a project. And some of these points that I bring out are some of the points that uh, I have to take a look at as one of the cadres. The most important part of this is that if a project has any types of conflict of interest, if it looks like it's not going to be sustainable, if it's a project that actually isn't going to be needed, we need to know this far in advance of funding the project. So with that, um, let's get going. The first picture I have is a picture of the city. This is the uh, town of Esquintla. Esquintla is uh, on the western side of Guatemala. And this area is in, uh, populated by about 153,000 people. The area itself is uh, pretty thriving. It has a lot going for it. The area itself outlying uh, the areas is more agricultural and the areas where we are actually taking a look at doing this project. The specific project site itself is named Colonial Monterey. And in Colonial Monterey, there's about 4,000 people living in this area. Uh, water conditions are very poor. As you can see by the second picture, the second picture actually shows the water conditions of the local school. The first one shows uh, the students uh, in the, quote, water troughs, and this is how they actually get their water retrieved from them. The second picture shows uh, water. Um, they not only use it for bathing, washing, whatever, hygiene. They also use it for drinking. And as you can see, the quality of the water, as it shows in the uh, picture with the little girl there, the water quality actually that you see in that trough is the water quality that's coming out of that tank. And so this is why the Rotary Club of um, Edna in Minnesota, uh, headed and spearheaded by Gary Peterson, uh, took interest in this project. He worked with the Rotary Club of Esquintla, which is in Guatemala. The number of uh, people that they have there, the actual members, is about 11. The current president name is Gary Trigueros, and Gary uh, met me uh, along with a number of people from the club, and we had a great time talking about this project and Rotary in general. One of the benefits I get is I get to see how projects work around the world and also get to meet and be greeted by those Rotarians worldwide. One of the areas that we take a look at um, as far as the pre-evaluations, first of all, has to do with the needs assessment. We need to know that the community is, in fact, in need of specific items, this uh, being water and sanitation, this project specific. And we have to know if, in fact, the need is identified and uh, something that the community actually wants to address first. Because without that ownership, without them being involved with it, the project would not be sustainable. We also have to look at conflict of interest. Oftentimes, well, not oftentimes, on occasion, there, we will find conflict of interest with groups, organizations, to where the money actually benefits then somebody outside, an individual example, uh, rather than the beneficiaries themselves. Water and sanitation uh, is, is one area, in my opinion, that is the lead part of it. In other words, in order for a community to thrive, to become more economically developed, it needs to start with water. Without water, you don't have health. You will lack education, you will lack those opportunities of vocational um, experience and entrepreneurship. So we take a look at that. When we look at um, those groups that are actually funding with us, working with us, oftentimes, and in this case it was a fact, there were two religious groups that were actually working with Rotary in conjunction with us in doing this project. One is uh, Water Missions International, which has a, uh, I wouldn't say a focus, but they are backed by um, a, a Christian group. And because of that, we as Rotarians have to make sure that that religious point is not brought forward when we do these projects. In other words, any type of religion or political views have to be omitted from any project sites. And the reason for this, we want to make sure that Rotary stays neutral and that the people that we benefit um, equally get to pick and choose what they want to do. Now, one thing uh, also interesting about this is that in, in this area specific, 
Religion does carry a, a very high standard. Uh, most of the area, they are Catholic, but on occasion they aren't. And this is one area where we have to be very cautious of because we want to have buy-in from the entire community. And in order for us to do that, uh, we have to make sure that this, in fact, is one of the points that we lead with. The next picture you'll see is a picture of the water tank. This is part of the existing system and one of the areas where it's failing. As you can see by that picture, the water tank is metal. It was constructed probably 40 years ago. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't hold water anymore. It's very porous, and in fact, it didn't hold enough volume anyways to um, sustain this community of 4,000 people. So this is going to be one of the areas we're going to look at. That tank is going to be replaced with a 40,000-gallon tank, and that will also be above ground because this is where the pressure comes from. It's a gravity feed system, and because of that, there has to be enough water height to actually push through the pipes to the individual homes. Another interesting point about this project that we've, I've done, oftentimes we have a one-point system. In other words, water will come out of one specific area, usually in the middle of a community, uh, in a school, something like this. This project actually included distribution to each and every household, so there's about 400 houses in this area. And uh, because of that, this project ended up being about a $300,000 uh, global grant. The next picture you see is a picture of the, um, the past well. Uh, this is a, the, the well itself. And the well is, was very shallow. And uh, right now it's non-functioning, even though we have the pump house there, the motor's in place, the motor doesn't work, uh, water is not being retrieved because the system is completely, uh, I would say, plugged up. All of the distribution pipes to the households are, are not being used right now, and uh, they're going to be completely redone. So you see the picture there. This is actually the same um, basic area where we will be putting in the new well. The new well will be reaching uh, approximately five to 600 feet in depth, and so it'll pass this one up. This one here is about a 40 or 50 foot deep well. So at five, 600 feet, we are guaranteed that we will be able to hit the uh, the good water, the aquifer where the water is uh, most pure. The other part of uh, looking at the water is that once it's retrieved out, we need to do an analysis of that water. And that water has to take, we have to take a look at any microbes, uh, biologicals that could possibly contaminate the water. Um, also minerals, bacteria, fungi, anything that could affect uh, the health if this is consumed. So we have water evaluations done for all the water even after we drill these wells. So we have to be assured that we put the right filtration in place after that. The next picture is a picture that I took uh, with my camera peeking down into the water system. As you can see, this water looks fairly pure, even though it's contaminated. This water was uh, contaminated with a lot of uh, microbes. And because of that, the people think the water is safe. So we would drink the water, not realizing that they're actually invisible to the human eye, um, the contaminants that actually existed in the water. The project also includes a sanitation component to it, that is latrine, latrines. And so each house will not only have a water point of connection, but it will also have uh, constructed a latrine system where water will not be recontaminated with um, human waste. And this is, again, part of the process. Not only water do we address, but in order to protect that water, we have to have latrines set in place. So hygiene, uh, sanitation, all of the above become part of the project. The next picture I have shows a group, a community uh, meeting, and the people that you see in this picture actually are the community committee for water. And their job and their task is not only to get everybody's buy-in from this, but also to maintain and preserve that water to make sure that this remains sustainable. Once Rotary partners in and does a project like this in a community, it is expected that the community would then take over the project and be able to lead that project and do that on their own without any additional help beyond the point of installation. There, are, there is a group uh, of people that we could actually organize into, and this is called a Rotary Community Corps. And Rotary Community Corps, some of you may not have heard that, even Rotarians that have done these types of projects. A Rotary Community Corps is a community corps that is based on and backed by Rotarians or Rotary Clubs. The Rotary Clubs work closely in conjunction with these groups and organizations to make sure that they maintain the sustainability, that they maintain the quality that was implemented on the initial installation. And so this also becomes an important component of it. So take a look at it. It's called Rotary Community Core. Part of the buy-in process that we have includes the community, uh, the 
community cores. And with this group organization, they then become part of the ownership. They start with the, the planning, they go through and do the evaluations. They also have buy-in and are requested to see who they can have in the community volunteer up to help out with the maintenance, the installation, the ongoing changes of filtration and to make sure that all the systems work within the community and in the households. The gentleman you see on the right, uh, the tall gentleman, his name is Rolando Ramirez and he is the project coordinator on site. He's Rotarian with the Rotary Club of Esquintla. He was uh, my aide at the time and he did a great job for me. Very knowledgeable on not only the area itself because uh, he actually walked in there and people were calling him by first name. Well, it was uh, very impressive. But also with the knowledge that and, and base that he has with doing these types of grants specific. He identified this as being the poorest area of Esquintla. And Esquintla is broken down, I believe, into 16 or 18 different communities. Um, what's unique about this is that the community itself is broken down into neighborhoods. And each neighborhood has different characteristics. This one, Colonial Monterey, was one area where they identified it as being of the poorest of the poor of the area of Esquintla. The next picture shows the, uh, the city, this is, uh, or the town, I would say. Uh, this is, these are the streets, how the people are living in each of these uh, areas here. And I put this picture up also because this picture is going to reflect where the distribution line is going to go. Believe it or not, there's a water pipe that goes down each and every one of these streets. That water pipe is going to be the lead distribution point for each of the water uh, sites that are going to go to the individual household. So every street currently has a water main in it that's going to be supplied and serviced by the pump and, and the well that we are installing. Now, if we are going to have sustainability, one area we have to take a look at is how they're going to be maintained, who's going to have the responsibility of this. Because, in fact, if, for example, there was a failure on a main line, and there was nothing in place to say who's responsible for that breakage. That means that the community would literally have to go to that street, dig that thing out, find where the pipe is broken, and figure out a way to repair it, even though they may not be technicians or water engineers, as they're called in uh, Guatemala. So in order for us to do that, we have to address any portion of the hardship that would occur in these projects. So what I did, the next picture was, I asked that we have an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, signed by the uh, local municipality, the city of Esquintla, and to make sure that they would take on the responsibility. The gentleman in the picture um, with me is, his name is Henry Cruz. He's the actual secretary of the municipality. And uh, the paper that we're holding actually is a document itself. And I brought a picture with me that I'll share. Um, this picture here, uh, is the actual agreement that was signed by the municipality of Esquintla and also by the uh, Rotary Clubs. And because of that, this will remain in place. Uh, the stamp on it shows that it has historical significance and that this will be retained for future reference. And the agreement now is set in place for them to do that. Another part that's interesting and why they would send a cadre uh, as opposed to doing it, I would say, um, here in the United States via email is that we as a, a cadre have to also understand not only the cultures of the area, but also the people. And government plays a key, key part of that. The municipality of Esquintla is broken down into two different, actually three different segments. You have a mayor, and the mayor is in charge of overseeing everything. Then you have the councils, and there's about 16 to 18 different council members. Those 16 to eight, 18 different council members um, represent different areas within the community. So there's 16 basically neighborhoods. And each of the uh, areas will then have one representative. There's also what's called the syndicate or syndico. And the syndico has to do, again, with a secondary backup of government. And that would be more of a focus on education, for example, transportation or streets. You would have somebody doing health. So there are different groups uh, within that. So you have two different sides. You have a geographical one, and you also have one of focus, of, of needs. And so that's how the government is set up. Knowing this, we could then jump into the government and ask them what specific areas we need help in. The next picture that we have um, shows the group, uh, that group that we have organizing. And this group um, is made up of the specific council members of, of the area and the region and also the, the syndico, or those people that are in charge of health and, and uh, sanitation. 
specifically, along with a, a number of uh, Rotarians there. The gentleman in the back with the red shirt, I want to give him a, a, a big uh, heads up here. His name is Kenny Trigueros, and he is the president, current president of the Rotary Club of Esquintla. Uh, again, great man. He is, believe it or not, a third generation Rotarian. Uh, his mother and father are in the club. Both of his brothers are in the club, along with his grandfather, also a member of this club. The next picture we have uh, is a meeting that we had. This is a, a picture of Rolando um, with the community leader. And that community leader actually was um, in charge of bringing together what I call the needs assessment. And part of that um, that was lacking that we didn't have in hand was how much or how many of the people in that community actually wanted the water. And so I had to have this affirmed for the Rody Foundation. I met with him the day before. On the second day at this meeting, he actually handed me this packet. And this packet has signatures of close to 350, 350 different families of the 400 actually were there. Some of the members actually were not around, but these uh, signatures, believe it or not, all happened in one day. So he handed me 18 different pieces of paper with about 22 to 24 signatures on each of those. That confirmed the fact that we definitely had buy-in from that community. Our hopes and anticipation, because this is going to be a fast turnaround project from what I understand from the Rody Foundation, is that we will be able to implement this very soon, probably within the next two or three months. Funding, believe it or not, is already completed. Um, I went in there for the final evaluation to make sure that everything was set in place. Most of those have been. There are a few points that need to be worked on. But this project uh, will be very, very successful, seeing 4,000 people benefiting from clean water at the household level is something that, uh, believe it or not, I haven't seen. Most of the time, we have them, but they're shared within communities. Never individually per household would be something that that good. And you literally have uh, each household will be able to turn on the water faucet. That water faucet would be certified as clean water. Uh, the other points that I've seen have just one point of good water. Everything else domestic-wise was uh, pretty bad. So this is uh, very unique itself in a specific project. The next picture I have so there's a community of uh, El Pilar. This is a secondary site, and this secondary site is one that's going to be a future one. The application for this grant has not yet been um, forwarded in. It's something of future, but since I was there, I was asked by a friend of mine to actually evaluate it and take a look at this project to see if, in fact, this one also, um, if there's some work that could be done in advance of that. So the picture you see is with a community group. Uh, this, again, has to do with the syndico and also the, the council people. In this area, um, again, different municipality. This is El Pilar. And uh, in the foreground, you'll see a well, uh, actually a, a hole uh, around that box. Actually, you can't see the well itself. But this was actually dug and completed within a week of me uh, actually arriving there. This well is about a 700-foot deep well that was actually drilled not by the government, but it was funded by a local sugarcane uh, grower. So that company was the one that actually are donating the system to them. Rody will then take that well and do the distribution of that. The next picture shows uh, the group as, as we talk about it and discuss how um, it's going to affect the people. I wanted to see if, in fact, that we had the buy-in, which, in fact, was another area where we had strong buy-in. I needed to affirm that the government, uh, the municipality, was willing to take on the responsibility of uh, being partners with us. In other words, they had to also be involved with planning, with the agreements to do maintenance, and also be involved with about one-third of the total project itself. The next picture uh, shows us as a group, um, and you can see the well actually in this picture. And the group uh, here includes the Community Water Committee, uh, members of that, you have the municipal government uh, of El Pilar, and you also have a number of Rotarians that visited with us there to take a look at this project. In the background, you'll see the school, and this is where the project actually is going to be initiated. The school will get the first water, but then as it gets distributed out, it'll go through the community. The next picture I have um, shows what the streets of El Pilar are. And as you can see by the street, this picture, completely different from the municipality of uh, Colonial, um, Colonial Monterey, because this is a very rural area. 
The um, government uh, officials actually confirmed that they, in fact, will also participate. They will be the ones laying the pipes, the water mains. They will take the responsibility of maintaining those along with that installation and any repairs. So um, that was a good program because, in fact, this community actually is a lot larger geographically than the one in Colonial Monterey. This goes quite far. They claim that there's about 3,000 people that live here. I did not get to see everybody because a lot of it is in an agriculture area. So houses, rather than being side by side or actually out in these fields or different areas of that because it's an agricultural area. The next picture uh, I have uh, shows one of the other areas. This is one of the main thoroughfares of um, El Pilar. And as you can see, there's a lot of construction going on. The roads are being improved. It, it is a dirt, uh, a dirt road. But um, you can see that they're actually widening these things up. And part of that has to do with the economy in the area. Even though it's a very poor and recessed area, repressed area, um, the sugarcane companies come, are coming in there and farming thousands of acres in this area. And the employees are actually the um, residents of El Pilar. Now, unfortunately, uh, it was found that the water, the shallow water of wells, were actually being contaminated by the growth of these, uh, the sugarcane from uh, pesticides to fertilizers. So what we did and took a look at that was we addressed this, or I would say not we, but the Rotarians addressed this as one of the issues, which was one of the reasons why the, uh, the company, the sugarcane company, actually was willing to drill that well uh, to show good faith of that. So now we are down into an aquifer that is fairly safe from uh, contamination from the surface. The next picture I, I took, uh, and this was kind of fascinating, we talk about sugarcane uh, here, we only see the uh, I would say the packages, but we don't see it actually being uh, harvested. This picture, first picture, shows one of the uh, trucks coming down the street where we were actually leaving El Pilar. And as you can see, um, there's not a lot of, I would say, safety factor. This one here, as you go to the next picture, was a truck that actually had four different uh, trailers behind it. They were maxed out, definitely loaded up. Um, I made comment to the Rotarian that was driving the van for me and asked him, I said, so is this kind of common or normal? He said, well, it's kind of normal, more or less. Uh, there are some of these guys that will actually pull as many as eight different, eight different trailers. Uh, so uh, I, I got to see the four, the four pack itself, and it was pretty impressive and pretty scary. Uh, I don't know how much brake they use, but they don't use a lot of it. I noticed they don't slow down much for anybody or anything. The next picture shows the... Um, uh, Part of the streetscape, this is a highway going from El Pilar back to uh, Esquintla. And as you can see along the side, there's a lot of small communities. Uh, these communities, uh, they thrive. Most of it has to do with uh, tourism. Some of it has to do with the, the trade itself of uh, sugarcane, but that is probably the number one income source are the sugarcane fields. The next picture I have uh, is a picture of uh, the next group that's going to be coming in, doing the project itself in um, in El Pilar, and the gentleman, tall gentleman in the back with the red shirt on, his name is Brian Hall. I want to give Brian a big shot because we're good friends, we go back a ways, and uh, he's another one doing great things for Rotary, and uh, this is one of the areas he picked, which is kind of fascinating because of all the areas and all the project sites around the world that we would have these kind of connections. Uh, I, I take that back. Let me say this. I've been to quite a few uh, different areas to do and evaluate water projects, uh, not just water projects, but Rotary projects. This last year, I've had the opportunity to evaluate eight of them. What's fascinating is, of the eight, we oftentimes run into people that, that we know. In other words, I have acquaintances uh, around the world. And as more and more work gets done through Rotary, uh, I, I find that we have more and more acquaintances. And those that we don't have or we haven't met before now become acquaintances. So Rolando, for example, Ricardo, uh, uh, Let's see, Ariaza, who is uh, also one of the drivers for me, uh, Kenny, all of them. Uh, we are now family friends. We're going to be friends forever, so part of the rotary process. The last picture that I had I wanted to share with you, uh, this is one of the pictures that I had. I had the, I, I would say, opportunity to go to the local hospital. This hospital was in Esquintla. And in Esquintla, in the municipality, uh, the federal government of Guatemala, there are a number of hospitals that are private. Those are well-funded. They usually have to do with the religious groups. But then there are also the community hospitals. The picture you see here is of a community hospital. This is a, a very young infant, probably only about a week or two old. And you can see by uh, the, the picture itself, 
the conditions uh, that this ho hospital has to work in. Uh, it, it was probably one of the worst hospitals that I've seen as far as the, I would say, the, the conditions of it. They asked me to wash my hands because these children are actually, um, I, I would say, I would say these children are fortunate to actually get medical treatment. Unfortunately is the fact that there's very little as far as resources for them to actually have. I was asked to wash my hands before I went in because these uh, are children that are, I, I would say, prone. Um, I went to go wash my hands and the uh, sink was bad, uh, pretty disgusting. It had black mold growing on it. I went to turn the water on and the water wouldn't even come out. And so I asked the nurse or the doctor what to do and they said, well, you know, sorry, we don't have any water. We haven't had it for about a day, about 24 hours. So they gave me uh, alcohol wipes to do that. You also see in that picture um, the black mold that's coming out of the roof of that. And also the blankets, the beddings of that for that infant. Uh, I heard that those were as much as 20 years old. Some of, uh, some of the time they have water to wash them, some of the time they don't. The uh, incubators, uh, the respirators, things like that, they reuse, recycle everything because they have no money to buy new equipment. So um, everything is washed, hand washed. Uh, they don't have anything to uh, sterilize anything with. So it, it's a very, I would say, rough area to walk through. One of the other unfortunate areas is that these have, this hospital had four floors. They had the uh, infants, neonatal on the bottom. Uh, as you walked up, you had the older, older people. Uh, next one would be women those that were coming out of surgery. The top one would be women that were there for a little bit longer time, and the very top would be the men. And um, other interesting point is that they didn't even have a functioning elevator there. For those that were sick, for the doctors, for the food to go up, they had to go up and down the four flights of steps. Uh, one of the patients that I saw in the men's ward actually uh, was being guarded by about eight different police officers. Uh, it was evident that it was a gunshot injury, and uh, I believe the gentleman was probably apprehended. So this is what you see in areas like that. I bring this up as part of the presentation of water and sanitation because, you know, as, as we move forward with trying to create better water uh, sanitation and trying to increase the, the availability of health for them, um, this is going to be one of the components we have to deal with. Keeps them out of the hospitals. I wanted to share this with you because this, again, is a pre-evaluation. I hope to uh, have this completed, and within a year's time, I'll bring you back the finished product of that. With that, uh, I hope you enjoyed the tour. Uh, this is Guatemala, and this is Rotary, the Rotary Foundation working at its finest. Thank you very much, and be proud of what the Rotary Foundation does. We'll see you next time.